In this video, we're going to talk all about charging electric vehicles. There are a plethora of different adapters and ports and plugs. There's also AC, DC, not that one, and level one, level two, level three charging and so forth. There are some changes coming in the very near future that are really important and pretty cool also. We're gonna dive in. In this video, we're gonna start with the basics of EV charging and then we'll build on from that. The equipment that you use to charge the car, commonly called an EV charger, is technically known as EVSE or electric vehicle supply equipment. Smaller versions of this are available for your home and then larger versions are available out in the public for charging. EVSEs use two different formats. First is AC charging using alternating current or the normal current in our households and DC fast charging, which is the type of current used by any battery, including the car battery. Since the EV's battery is DC, when you use AC charging, the charger needs to send the power to the car as AC, where it goes through an inverter built into the car which converts it to DC at 400 volts and some of the newer cars are 800 volts. In DC charging, the EVSE converts the AC power to DC before it sends it to the car and then it charges directly into the battery and it can do that much faster than AC charging. AC charging comes at two different charging rates. Level one is 120 volts AC and is less than 2000 watts. It's also known as trickle charging. Level two charging uses 240 volts household AC, like you'd find in a larger appliance, a dryer or an oven. While DC fast charging can charge from maybe 100 kilowatts to up to 350, with even faster charging coming in the future. How long will it take to charge the average EV battery? And we're using 60 kilowatt hours for that. Uh, at level one, it will take over 24 hours. At level two, six or seven with DC fast charging from 15 to 30 minutes, sometimes a little more. Now, faster is not always better. Level two is perfect for home charging overnight, convenient and less expensive. DC fast charging though is much better for road trips. EVSEs use many different connectors. This is one of the more common ones called a J1772. At the end of the charging cord is the plug. And then you take the plug and plug it into the socket that matches on the car. J1772 connectors were first used all the way back in 2001. And at the time they were actually rectangular. Um, they were standardized and in the format that they are now in 2010. EVSEs that use this standard can charge at what's called level one, which is normal household current at 120 volts. Now, my first electric vehicle was a Chevy Volt, and this is the EVSE that came with that, and it runs at uh, 120 volts level one. However, it is slow. Level two charging runs at 240 volts, similar to any 240 volt appliance, a hot water heater, a dryer, or an oven. And you can purchase a level two charger for your home and charge overnight. Um, you can also find level two 1772 chargers in public um, at a number of places and you can charge while you're at work or while you're out running errands. On the 1772 connector, the two large pins carry the AC power. There's also a ground. There are also two low powered smaller pins. One of them is called the proximity pilot. It will not let any power pass through this plug until it is plugged in and locked on your vehicle. And the control pilot talks to the vehicle and controls the charging rate. Level two charging on the 1772 can go up to 19.2 kilowatts, which is 240 volts at 80 amps. However, in the real world, you see it going up to 11.5 kilowatts. But the 1772 plug in North America is used by almost every car manufacturer, except for one. Tesla introduced their own connector back in 2012 with the Model S, and it also does level one and level two charging and has a very similar pinout to what we saw on the 1772 
and they did it with a smaller sized cable and less weight. Tesla offers level two home chargers as well as mobile chargers that you can just throw in the car and take with you. Uh, but there's also many other chargers available online from third party sites such as Amazon. Let's move on to DC fast charging. If you take a 1772 connector and add on another section that carries DC power, this is called CCS, which is Combined Charging System, started in 2011. Now, the pins that carry AC power during AC charging are not used when you do DC charging, and the other pins remain the same. In fact, you can see that the AC pins are completely missing from this CCS plug. Though some CCS plugs do have those pins, they're not connected. A car with a CCS socket can accept a CCS plug for DC fast charging. And they can also accept a J1772 for AC charging at level one or level two. And you can see that the J1772 plug only takes up the top half of the CCS socket. Also for DC fast charging, there's an older legacy uh, plug that's still available, and this is called Chatamo. It is used in Japan and a few other places. It was also used uh, on the Nissan Leaf in the United States. It uses a CAN bus for communication, and its pin layout is unlike anything else. On the Nissan LEAF, you had a J1772 port for level 2 charging, but a completely separate Chatamo for DC charging. And you can still find a DC fast charging with a Chatamo plug still available in the U.S. In North America, the other DC fast charging connector is the Tesla plug. And yes, it's the same Tesla plug that already does level 1 and level 2. It also does... DC fast charging, sometimes called level three. At the top of the connector, the power pins carry AC for level one and level two charging and DC for DC fast charging. The control pilot allows intelligent communication between the vehicle and the charger. Now the CCS connector is big and heavy and bulky and the cable's pretty large on it. The Tesla is much smaller, lighter, and more elegant. Now, Tesla DC chargers are called superchargers, and over time, they've gone through a few different versions. Version 1 of the supercharger had two charging stalls per transformer, and the transformer capped out at 100 kilowatts. So the two charging stalls, labeled 1A and 1B, or 2A and 2B, etc., would share the 100 kilowatts from the transformer. So neither car would be able to get the full 100 kilowatts. And version 2 also had two chargers or two stalls that shared one transformer, uh, but they did up the power to as much as 150 kilowatts. Supercharger version 3 has four stations labeled a, B, C, and D on a transformer. Each of the stations can charge at up to 250 kilowatts. So for AC level one and two, we have the J1772. For DC fast charging, we have the CCS. And remember the 1772 fits into the top half of the CCS plug. We also have the legacy Chatamo plug for DC. And we have the Tesla plug which does both AC and DC. In 2022, to qualify for federal funding, Tesla changed its charging connector to use the same protocols as CCS and renamed it the North American Charging Standard. SAE International, formerly known as the Society of Automotive Engineers, is calling this the J3400. By using an adapter, other EVs can now gain access to Tesla's supercharging network. Now, all Teslas have their charging port at the very rear of the driver's side. Other EVs, though, have their ports on various locations on the car. And so to compensate for that, the new Tesla version 4 superchargers will have a longer cable. And as of March of 2024, Ford has already started shipping Tesla adapters for free to um, F-150 Lightning owners as well as Mach-E owners. And they can get it for free, like I said, and it gives them access to the Tesla charging network as well as CCS networks. 
Okay, this is a closer look at the adapter. And most of the other car manufacturers are saying that they will also provide adapters in 2024. And then in 2025, all of these companies say that they will switch over to the NAX ports built into their cars. So they can access Tesla superchargers without an adapter and CCS chargers with an adapter, giving EV owners many more choices for DC fast charging. So any car with a North American charging standard or NAX port can use Tesla home chargers or third-party home chargers, or out in public, they can use what is known as destination chargers with the NAX plug. Or they can access any of the existing 1772 chargers with an adapter, or use that same adapter for your existing 1772 home charger. Outside of the U.S., there are a few other charging systems used. Let's take a quick look. In Europe, the standard is the CCS Type 2, also known as the Minikis. Cars with a CCS Type 2 socket can accept a large DC plug or a smaller Level 2 AC plug. And in China, the standard is GBT, which also comes in a DC format as well as an AC Level 2 format. That wraps it up for this video. See you in the next one.